Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode from Ampro Engineering. Today we are going to rebuild this Motocraft 2150 carburetor. Wait, wait, hang on a second. Oh, sorry, sorry, wrong project, wrong project. I'll be right back. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode from Ampro Engineering. I know it's been a little while, but I wanted to make some more progress on Project Bandit. This is the result of the cleaning of the body and the stripping using a oven cleaner. And you can see that there is quite a bit of residue on the body and I assure you that it looks a lot worse than it actually is. The body is, in most places, quite silky smooth. A lot of what you're seeing is an adhesive residue that has been stuck on this car since I originally got it in the early 90s. I think at this point here, I would like to get the razor blade out and begin to kind of trim off some areas that are heavily scraped or damaged. And then from there, we can use a very low grid sandpaper to begin to smooth the entire body out and prepare it for its first coat of primer. There's a few areas here that have some very high levels of uh, residual adhesive. So I've got this flat blade exacto knife here. I'm just kind of running it over the surface. Now, in doing this, I'm not removing any plastic at all. I'm simply removing some of the adhesive because that's just going to be a little bit faster when I begin to do some of the sanding. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I just want to get just the majority of it off. And you can see some of it is, in fact, coming off. Now, the last thing I want to do is mar the surface. So if you are going to do this, be very careful. You don't want to take a big chunk out of the plastic or make a big cut in it because that's not going to... That's not going to be very easy to clean up afterwards. Also remember that this thing is very, very sharp. So please, um, if you are a youngster out there, make, make sure that you have some parental supervision when doing this. That's a heck of a lot better. I'm going to do a little bit more to the roof. And the roof is actually a pretty bad area. And it's kind of hard for me to even get this thing started. And it does kind of feel like this roof is going to fight me, so I think it would be best if I just start hitting that with the sandpaper. Uh, in the bed, the angle is just very, very poor, so it's not going to be very likely that I'll be able to get in here and, uh, and begin to clean this up too well. Not, I've removed the majority of the adhesive that I can, so then this, this next bit here I'm going to focus on just taking away some of the surface texture. This is 400 grit sandpaper. Normally I'll start with a 200 but uh, or 220, but honestly the surface is already pretty good on this truck, so I don't think I need to go with something that, ag uh, that abrasive. The goal here is not to really sand away any plastic, it's just to clean up the surface. Trust me, I'm no professional at this. Uh, many of you probably have seen some of my cars and I think I do okay. There's a lot of people out there that are simply spectacular. So if this is a path that you wanna go down, please do a little bit of research and just take a look at uh, who else is out there on, on YouTube or some of the RC car forums. In fact, you'd probably have the best luck looking at a forum where they focus on model cars. So I'm going to continue to do this really on all these surfaces and see how see how the surface turns out. I think this roof is going to be the most fun. Now these roof pillars are in pretty good shape, but you know, you don't want to put too much of a load on here because the last thing you want to do is crack one of these pillars. So just keep that in mind. The reason I'm not using a sanding block is that the surface actually does have a slight curvature to it. And I, I want the sandpaper to conform to the, the residual adhesive on here to get that off. That's really what I wanted to kind of focus on here. There are some regions where you can see the parting line of the mold. And I'm just going to take a razor blade and just try and just get that seam knocked down a little bit. What will happen is that once the car is nicely painted, this is going to be a bit challenging as it's got this very, very thin piece of plastic that will be fighting me as I'm trying to clean up the body. And this is going to be true for most of these ABS bodies. You're always going to have a parting line somewhere that's going to need some, some cleaning up. In fact, you can see it. I can point this out here on the hood. 
it's it's quite hard to see, but there is a line that separates this portion of the fender and that portion of the fender. I'm not going to go too crazy on sanding it because I'll take away a lot of the plastic and alter the geometry of the body. So instead what's going to happen is I'm going to use a Tamiya filler primer and do a couple of passes over this and eventually the paint will fill in the imperfections. Same with a number of these little depressions on the hood as well as on the roof. As you can see here, we're making some good progress. The roof is a heck of a lot nicer than I had anticipated. There is definitely some road rash in these areas here. And uh, my opinion is really, I would not start doing any sanding on this at all until you've smoothed the surface out just a little bit more and sprayed the car down with some white surface primer. The reason for this is there's, I think, quite a bit of material missing in this area here, and sanding until smooth is going to do nothing more but further deform that area, as well as make it thinner and weaker. So, against your better intuition, I would really recommend against doing that. Instead, focus on some of the, the trim in here. Now, this body came out pretty good, but I'm going to run this X-Acto knife just gently in here, simply to clear out some of the residual paint. And you want to be careful, this X-Acto knife has the tip that's broken, so it's giving me a much more blunt surface to detail this edge over here. And I think ultimately it's going to remove some of the paint that would otherwise kind of mar or deter the, the sharpness of these edges. Do a little bit more sanding in this area here, and I recommend sanding kind of open palm because you don't want to focus on this edge here. You want to just keep it flat. Again, you're welcome to use like a sanding block. I found that usually they're not too necessary unless I'm working on a badly deformed surface. I do use them on full-size vehicles, but uh, when it comes to the RC cars, it's pretty rare that I'll do this when I'm simply prepping a surface for paint. And I think right there, that is just about enough. And you can see where the surface is a little bit smoother, but it is showing off that rough edge, and we're going to have to address that. After a little bit of sanding, I think the whole body is basically at a point where I believe after a little bit of a bath, we can dry it off, give it a coat of primer, and see how bad the, the plastic really is. This is the result of the body after just a quick bath. I did get the toothbrush out and just make sure that I got inside all the little grooves over here. And I think overall, we are headed in the correct direction. As you can tell, there's still a lot of, a lot of trouble spots that we need to address. But I'm really not going to know the full extent of this until we paint the body. So that's the next step is I'm going to go ahead and paint this body. It, um, that was my daughter. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and paint this body in a nice uh, white color so that it will kind of highlight all of the, are you having fun? There we go. She's enjoying herself right now. We'll paint this thing white and see then all of the additional trouble spots when we give it a good color sanding. So let's go ahead and do that. Paint has had some time to cure, and as you can see, the body looks really, really good. The sides are very smooth, the hood, even the roof, which was quite terrible, looks practically new. Just to kind of give you a little overall feel of the car, I'm very, very happy with how the primering has come out. And most importantly, the primer has now given me the ability to very nicely inspect the rougher areas on the car. 
in all honesty, if I was ready to just, you know, kind of throw the car back together and just have a nice little runner, this is a great time to just shoot it with a coat of paint. You know, it's decent enough to where from about 10 or so feet away, the thing will look spectacular. I'm gonna go a little bit more crazy on this car, so I would like to address some of these areas. The first thing I'm going to do is take some sandpaper, again, this is 400 grit, and I am simply gonna run it over the paint in a lot of these trouble spot areas. And what's gonna happen is the paint is going to sand down wherever the sandpaper obviously comes into contact with it. This will leave the rougher spots white and allow me to see exactly where I have to focus my, my efforts. And I think that this is going to require a lot of my efforts. What it is currently showing me is that some of these areas here are not too shabby, but when it gets to this corner, we are getting a significant depression in this corner. And this tells me we have to build that back up. The same will be true when I kind of run this across the roof of the car. We will see all of the trouble spots. Some of these areas will be completely invisible after a couple of coats of priming and sanding. If you were to use like a filler primer, you'd be able to fill in some of the smaller depressions. I'm gonna run this sandpaper over the entire car now and just see where all my bad spots are. Well, the sanding has showed some areas that I wasn't expecting. I had forgotten that there was a bunch of little nicks in this area here, and I had no idea that there was any kind of damage in this door area. The roof does seem to be my most problematic area, and in all fairness, it actually feels like I mean, it feels perfect. What you're looking at here is definitely more cosmetic, but it's telling me that this roof is going to be a bit of a trouble spot. So maybe a couple of coats of primer and color sanding will give me a really nice look. So this roof I'm not too concerned about. The hood looks really, really good. I have some concerns with the party line around the hood vents. So that may need to be addressed because I can actually feel it if I run my fingernail across that. So, as much as I hate to do this, most likely a solution would be a sanding block and just kind of working the edges down just a little bit to smooth out that surface. What you want to be careful with is that you don't want to grind down this leading edge. You want to focus your efforts right on the edges of this little, little uh, detail. The next thing is I have to wash this, get all of the primer, the, uh, the dust from the primer off, and then we're going to run a bead of super glue over these areas here, and I'll talk about why we're using super glue as soon as I finish washing this. The body's been washed, and what I did, I already put a layer down of super glue. There's just a bead of super glue along these edges here that had all of that damage in the wearing. The reason I use super glue is super glue, it doesn't shrink over time, it doesn't crack, and more importantly, is it dries like steel. It doesn't really matter what kind of super glue you use. Um, I am using a gel right now because the gel will stick to the surface that I'm applying it to and won't run off, whereas a more liquid super glue will kind of, you know, try and run down the side if you place it on such a, on such a maybe a, a vertical face like this fender. Now, though I did already run a bead on here, I do need to add a little tiny bit more. Zoom in a little bit here and you're gonna see that I am going to just just gonna kind of run this little wedge directly over here and great, I don't know why I just did that. Using the side of a, of a little screwdriver, I'm gonna try and just 
pat it down on the area that I want it to build up. Now what's important is you don't get it into any little cracks because super glue does not want to come off. So I'm just going to build it up. And uh, this can be done, uh, done in layers over and over again. Okay, so that's pretty good right there. I will do the same to this front corner. And in fact, I'll have to go around the entire car, but I'm going to focus on the really bad spots. Since I have to build this whole corner up again, I'm just going to slowly add a little bit each time. Be careful when you do this, you don't want to do the entire car because chances are you're going to forget. Grab one corner of it and it'll super glue to your hand, which will undoubtedly happen while I'm recording this. Haven't done this side yet as it wasn't nearly as bad, but I'm going to do it now. Again, just build up that edge a little tiny bit. Same with these corners. I don't know why this side of the car is so much nicer. But there, and lastly, I'm going to put a tiny bit on these back corners. Really, the smart thing to do would have been to have uh, painted this car a matte color, you know, kind of a primer black, and give it more of a more of a vintage mini truck feel, and use maybe a, a nicer body to go. Uh, the direction I want to go with this car, but that's that's not going to happen here. Okay, so we'll let this dry for a couple days, and we'll pick it back up and start sanding. I hope you can see this, but the oh, you really can't. <laughs> Sorry, it's really oh, you can kind of see it from here. The adhesive is basically built up a layer. The goal, of course, now is to blend this layer into the original plastic. So that is the next step here. What I use now is a sanding block. You must use a sanding block here. If you do not, sanding to try and uh, lower this edge will only result in the plastic around it getting sanded down and causing further deformation. The super glue is incredibly hard and you cannot do this by hand. So you need a sanding block and comically, what I use is an old printer cartridge. I don't know why, but this thing, you just kind of put the sanding paper around it and it works perfectly. So that is my sanding block of choice. And I'm going to try and kind of show you what I'm doing here as I'm on camera. And what you want to do is make sure it's as flat as possible and really focus on getting the, oh my head is actually working really well. Focus on applying a pretty uniform load on this so that all you do is sand down the super glue. Take your time here. If you try and rush through this, you're going to only ruin the body. So just follow the curvature and you can kind of see now. Oh yeah, that actually feels awesome. Yeah, that is coming out better than I anticipated. Okay. This guy, this is awesome right here. There's a little tiny lip right there, so we're trying to smooth that out. Where this is really going to come through is when you reprimer to check the high spots and the low spots. So that is pretty darn good. Okay. I'm gonna try, again, I'm going to try and do it from this angle. Actually, from here you can see it pretty well. So I'm going to do this flat face right here. Again, take your time. Super glue is ridiculously hard. This top surface and this front surface feel awesome. So I'm gonna do this corner now. This is probably the most dangerous part here because I have the most risk of damaging the fender flare. I have the most risk of sanding down the, the area where the grill goes. So you gotta be super careful. And the goal here is to only sand down the glue. I'm working on this edge right now and this whole face is basically flat so I'm trying to cut down the high spots of the glue and uh, just to show you real fast how well the front corner came out 
I thought at first that maybe I'd have to paint it to show it off better, but if you notice where the black is there and where the black is on the side and the area where the black is not, well, that's because what the white that you see is the buildup from the glue. So basically that entire corner that was missing and ground off is now back. I kind of feel like there's a slight imperfection there. I'm gonna give this thing a couple of coats of primer, give it some nice color sandings, and that will smooth all that right out. I've been sanding for a bit, and you can see again here how we have black, 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 that kind of line of black right there, but in this corner it's all white. And again, that's a rebuilding of that corner using the super glue. Same as there. This corner really came out awesome. Unfortunately, it looks terrible in the camera, but it is really, really quite smooth. All of these bumps are 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 basically gone. This corner I thought was gonna, really not going to come out very well and it actually feels really good. Feeling some slight bumps in here, some slight deviations, but uh, you know it's so hard to tell what's going on. I've got to shoot it with a coat of primer and then that'll give me a better idea. And again this corner here looks awesome. Same with this one right here. It's all, it's all back. That corner is all rebuilt. I did these corners as well. So I'm gonna give it a bath now. Spray it down tomorrow with another coat of primer and give it a color sanding and see where we're at. Sorry, can't talk and paint. As you can see, the truck's primer is all dry, and at first glance it looks awesome, but if we look closer, we are going to see some imperfections here. We can see some details where I simply wasn't able to sand this down because I didn't see it. Primering in a light color, this would have worked fine with gray as well. It has allowed us to investigate areas that simply weren't, weren't possible to look at before. You can see here this front corner has actually come out quite good. It definitely needs a little bit more work, but we can see that we have that sharp corner back really coming out quite good. And at the back, that sharp corner at the back of the beds is back. Okay, again, not perfect, but we are on the right track. So the next stage here is going to be to use a little bit softer sandpaper. Before we were using a 220 grit sandpaper, I'm gonna knock that back to about four to 600 and proceed to do that same sanding procedure. Right, like before, I've got my trusty former printer ink cartridge. Again, I know there's probably much better solutions than this, but it has always suited me just perfect. And what we really want to see is that super glue sanding off and not the paint. This will tell us that we're focusing on those high spots. That's working great. The key here is to take your time. Trying to rush through this, you're just going to screw everything up that you've, you've worked so hard on. That's quite nice. I think a little more in this area here. I find that feeling it actually works better than looking at it because you look at it right now, it looks terrible. Feeling it, however, this is, this is good. Just so you know, I am going to primer this again. Same pass along the top. This top area looks awesome, but we're just gonna give it kind of a diagonal sanding just to make sure that we've got it really good. Remember that the, the filler primer is doing just that. It is filling some of the imperfections. It's not going to fill a massive valley, but it is going to fill in those small, small problem spots and tidy up that paint shop. This looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to use my finger to sand this down just a little because what I want to do is just follow the surface contour now. That is not bad at all. All of the trouble spots have been sanded down and I have to say they came out pretty darn good. So you can see this corner here has been built back up. That party line is gone. 
I think this area is gonna need a little bit more work. This edge is done. This came out really good. Same with the back corners. I also did a little bit of work to the corner of the cab. And now I'm gonna give it a bit of a color sand again. You can see all these little nicks here. Maybe that one and that one are noticeable. All the rest, I can't even feel with my fingers. So maybe two more coats of primer on this roof, sanding in between. And the rest of the truck may need just one coat and it's ready to rock. So at this point here, we're gonna give it a nice light sanding. Again, I don't wanna take off too much. This is just gonna tell me where my high spots and my low spots are. And right now, it looks really, really even. And you always wanna sand between primer coats. This is what's gonna give you that really, really silky smooth surface finish. If you don't do this, you're gonna have a lot harder time laying down a flat coat of paint. And please note, I am absolutely no expert on this here. There's gonna be a lot of people out there better than I am. I think if you search uh, model car paint jobs, those are you're gonna find some real artists doing model cars. I mean, I've seen some of those cars that, that just look unbelievable. So this is just me trying to make a nice uh, body on my Tyco Bandit over here, but those model car guys are awesome. Looks like everything is pretty much sanded. Might be going overkill with that bed right now. The truck needs a nice bath, and then we will add another coat of primer. Uh, it's pretty important to note that when adding coats of primer that you do not overdo it. The more paint that you apply to one of these hard bodies, the more that all the little details are going to get filled. So it's important to only put primer where it needs it. Another coat of primer has been applied and we can see here that the result is becoming quite excellent. I will spare you the back and forth of, you know, continuing to touch up the car, but we can see here that these curves and these sharp edges are starting to take shape beautifully. You'll also note that I have applied a very, very light coat, if I can hardly see it here, a very, very light coat of some Tamiya body filler, this one right here. Usually I do not like to apply the body filler simply because it, uh, it will crack. Filler just cracks. That's just what it does when it cures. However, here we're talking about a thickness of a few hundredths of a millimeter. This is going to be less than paper thin in some areas, and um, that is that is never going to cause any kind of issue. So I'm gonna sand those areas. And the reason why I used the filler is because in some of these very, very fine areas, I've got the plastic sanded properly. It's all set. The super glue is all set. And if I continue to sand, it's very likely that I will begin to damage other areas. So that's why I'm gonna do that. Like before, we'll take our sandpaper. This is again, 400 grit. And I will give it a very light sanding. This to me, a body filler dries very, very hard, but not nearly as hard as that super glue. And again, the goal here is simply to sand off almost every ounce of that filler and just leave the the, uh, the the areas that I want to work with. After a little bit of work, you can see what we have here. There's a very, very light area of some filler there and a very light area here, but for the most part, all we see is that high uh, area of the plastic and then a transition into the remainder of the body, and that's what we want. I'm very carefully I'm going to just knock down that high spot. Okay. Well, that's really good, actually. Let me see if I can use it in this area. And there I won't because it's right on the edge of a curve. But this here, that, that really did it. You can see the remainder of what I'm leaving there those little notches, um, they look deep, but they're, they're impossible to feel any longer. I will touch up a few other areas and we'll be all done. So the entire body has been color sanded. You can see some of the imperfections that have been finally removed now. The body on this thing is quite excellent in comparison to what it used to be. Maybe it would have been smarter to start with a good one, <laughs> I suppose, but Again, you know how that sentimental value is. 
At this point here, um, I'm just kind of inspecting the car body, make sure it all feels nice. The look and feel are two different things. You do want to make sure you want to run your hand over absolutely everything. The whole thing was color sanded, and I think at this point here, I'm going to give it a final, very light coat of primer, and then color sand it with some, I don't know, probably around 2000 grit sandpaper under the faucet. And it, the reason for that is uh, usually color sanding is done on, uh, on paint, but if you do have little scuffs and ridges on the primer, it's still gonna show through the paint. And I've spent all this time making this body nice, I'm not gonna let a potentially uh, scratched primed surface give me issues later on. So the body was reprimered and here it is. I mean, I think you can see how good those corners came out. Remember these were just completely ground to nothing. I'm really very, very, very happy with this. I'm surprised that I was able to get this type of quality considering how this body started. The next bit is give it a color sanding and then it is ready for paint. So let's go ahead and do that. Right now I'm gonna color sand the body. I'm gonna use a 1500 grit sandpaper. Now it's important to get the wetter dry. Uh, if you don't do that, then this backing will come off and it'll just make a complete disaster. So I'm just gonna cut off a little tiny piece of that and wet the body down. Usually I would do this in the garage, but my lighting there is terrible. So we'll get this wet. I'm gonna try and use a little bit of water here because I don't wanna waste. And we're just gonna run the sandpaper directly over the surface and you don't have to do too much. The goal here is not to take off any, any paint, but just to make the surface very, very smooth in preparation for the sanding. The reason I like to use water when doing this is because the wet sanding will help to uh, move any of the paint that has come off of the body away from the surface that I'm sanding and it'll give you a really, really nice finish. And as you do this, you're going to feel the surface consistency change quite a, quite a lot. It'll go from being kind of uh, rough and noisy as you run the sandpaper over it to eventually almost silent. Again, right now I just want to get a real nice surface in preparation for the paint job. And I'm going to do this over the entire car. Every little nook and cranny. So I am all done color sanding the body. Of course, now it does have to dry, but when you're all done with this, you're gonna find that the surface consistency is, I mean, it's, it's perfectly smooth. This next bit, I guess, is going to be to figure out what color to paint the car, but more importantly, I've gotta finish the chassis on this. So I think this will conclude the bodywork portion of this Tyco Bandit build. I hope you enjoy this. It went a little more in depth than I anticipated, but it also came out better than I hoped. Please subscribe and you can add me on Facebook and Instagram at Ampro Engineering on both. And before you take off, please check out the band Blue Pinto. They allow me to use their songs on my videos and a link to their Facebook is in the end credits. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.